Hello, my name is Liz Carr. And you may recognise me. I play a character called Clarissa Mullery in the BBC drama Silent Witness. And if you don't recognise me, that's fine. What you need to know is that I represent Not Dead Yet UK and a growing group of disabled people from around the world who actively oppose the legalisation of assisted suicide or euthanasia. Now, we are secular, we are not anti-choice, but we believe that to involve the state and the medical profession and change the law in this area is to damage and to discriminate against certain groups of people. And we believe that it's a threat, a threat to many groups of people that will put lives at risk. So I'm here today to support my disabled activists from Australia who are going to speak to you with their authentic and their very real fears and their very real experiences of living in Australia and how that impacts on them and why that's informed their decision that this cannot be passed, this law. And I'm here to also tell you about my experiences from the UK. I was outside Parliament with many other disabled people last year in our UK Parliament and then our Scottish Parliament as well, opposed assisted suicide. And quite overwhelmingly, over 50% of all of our UK MPs opposed assisted suicide by almost three to one. Because what they didn't want to do is have people in fear. And the fact is that all disability groups, disability rights groups, our, our main medical associations, and I believe it's the same in Australia too, oppose, oppose legalising assisted suicide. So let's stop this kind of this glamorising of assisted suicide as the new and the, the only way to die. We've been doing death for a long time and we kind of know how to do it. But what we don't do very well is support people at the end of their lives. We need to get better at that. So that instead of protecting the, the, the rights of a few individuals, a few very loud and articulate individuals who want this right at the end of their life, we actually ensure that we're supporting the life choices throughout the life and towards the end of people's lives of all people. And that's what we believe. This is not, if you oppose assisted suicide, that doesn't mean that you, you support pain and suffering. Absolutely not at all. I want people to have the best death they can have. I just don't believe that the solution to a bad death is an assisted suicide. And I can speak from some authority with that because I have travelled around the world to all the countries where assisted suicide and euthanasia are legal. I have spoken to people who have seen their loved ones die. Many describe it as a beautiful death, but others describe it as something that maybe took over 20 odd hours, that maybe they were sick, that it didn't actually work. It's not the beautiful and dignified death that you always imagine. And is it about pain and suffering? Well, actually, if we look at the statistics from America, no, it isn't. The reasons people want this is usually around loss of autonomy and loss of dignity. Well, do you know what? They're the things that I live with all the time. As someone that needs 24-hour assistance in my life, I can't wipe my own bum, I can't get dressed on my own, I can't cook a meal. Does that mean that I'm not dignified? Does that mean that my life is not worth living? Now, of course, you're going to go, but that's your choice. It's about individual choice. No, no, it isn't. Because once you legalise assisted suicide, it puts pressure. It puts pressure on vulnerable groups of people. Pressure to think, well, that is a solution and maybe I should do that because really my life is a bit rubbish and I don't want to burden my family, do I? And it just takes one look from a, a care worker in terms of, oh, I've got to help you again. It just takes one look, you know? The people that often want assisted suicide are not those who are in the front line. Instead, it's those who imagine they might want it at the end of their lives. That's not a good enough reason to change the law, to change the moral landscape of, of, of your country, a great country. You can't go gently. If you want to go gently, then go gently into legalising assisted suicide by not doing it. Do not change the protection of the law. In fact, at the moment, keep it outlawed. And keep it outlawed, keep it about murder if somebody is assisted to die. That's where it has to sit here. Now look, if a person wanted to end their life and kill themselves, a right that they currently have, people have that right. It might not be a good or a desirable thing, but they have the right to end their life now. And actually, with assisted suicide, when it's legalised, all that that does is it hands that power over to a doctor. The doctor doesn't have to say yes. You just empower the doctor and license them, taking away your own power. People have their own power now, without changing the law or involving the state or involving a medical profession, which I believe in Australia does not want this power. So the people that it's involved don't even want this. Why are you even having this conversation? 
And if it's to be popular and trendy and ahead, well, no, not at all. Because the majority of countries have voted no to this. There's, what, around six countries in the, law that, in the world that have such a law? That's all. It's not that everyone's doing it. As I said, the UK, no. And in the States, it's only like four or five states out of, what, 50? The majority have voted against it, not for it. So let's not have peer pressure as well as another reason, or the glamorization of it, the reason for bringing it in, or choice. Because this really isn't about choice. It's usually about having no choice. And we want to make sure that everybody has decent choices in their life and at the end of their life. I remember talking to the late, great Stella Young, and she was stunned at the support that we have in the UK that disabled people have. And she told me how difficult the lives of many disabled and old and ill people are in Australia. And until that changes, until that changes, you cannot even think about this law. Now, finally, I just want to say to you, if a non-disabled person wanted to end their life, if they were there on a bridge about to jump on a railway, would you go up to them? Would you give them a helping hand and push them over and say, go on, go gently, go on. I support your self-determination. I support your choice. Go on, bye-bye. No, you wouldn't. You'd see their loss, the loss of their life as a tragedy and you would do all you could to prevent that. But if that person was obviously a disabled person or an ill person, would you feel differently? Would you go, but this is compassionate. And if I was like them, this is what I'd want. And isn't this about equality? What? Why do we have a different view for certain groups of people? This law would enshrine in law that certain groups of people, terminally ill and ill and disabled people, should be helped by the state to end their life. Wow. That's a lethal form of discrimination. And as long as some people's lives are viewed as less worthy and lives less worth living than others, you cannot enact such a law. So if you would help one group of people but not the other over that bridge, then question why. And as long as there's a difference in how you treat those two groups of people, you cannot. You cannot enact this law. And finally, there is a quote that I would like to read. Disabled people from Not Dead Yet internationally believe that if bills like this pass, that some people's lives will be ended without their consent through mistakes and abuse and pressure. No safeguards have ever been enacted or proposed that can prevent this outcome, an outcome which can never be undone. Please do not pass this law. Please, disabled people internationally are asking you to keep protecting us. Protect us with the law. Do not make our lives less worth living by passing this law.